Hi, I'm Dala, and today we're gonna find out why this Nissan Leaf doesn't want to charge. Let's go! Okay, first step is to verify the customer complaint. So the NX doesn't need to be charged right now, so let's just plug this one in. Sorry for the wind noise. It starts to charge, and click. It stopped to charge. So yeah, there's definitely something wrong with it. Let's check the codes. Okay, so I fired up LeafSpy, and we have two codes. And we have uh, B, 29C1 and P3173 both point towards the charger having some fault. And I looked this one up uh, online and a lot of users have had the same codes and yeah, they've had to replace the onboard chargers. This is quite typical for the 2011. The check EV uh, warning light is also on. So, uh, let's dig right into it. Uh, since we have a quick charger here at the shop, uh, check out my nice <laughs> customization here. Uh, we can uh, try charging it via Chademo, and um, this should work because the Chademo outlet usually isn't handled by the onboard charger, so the Chademo goes directly to the battery. Uh, as you can see here, uh, Chademo is uh, working just fine and is able to yeah, charge the vehicle. So let's bring it inside. There are some tests that we can run before diving into the charger. The first step is to check this uh, proximity detection pin, uh, the one on the far right bottom to ground. And these pins should have around 4.5 volts between them. So this one is 4.34, which is okay. Uh, next I'm going to set the meter to resistance mode and we will check the diode. This next step is with the positive lead to the control pilot and the black to ground. And uh, this one indicates a quite high resistance, 2.2 mega ohms. And um, this doesn't look right. So now I will switch the black and red uh, the other way around and we'll do another measurement. And the uh, other way around we have an open circuit or infinitely high resistance. So there's definitely something wrong with this diode. I'll put up on screen the normal numbers that you should be seeing. Okay, so before we go ahead and tear out the onboard charger, I might mention that a few people have had some great luck with uh, adding a diode in line with the Type 1 port at the front of the car. But this car doesn't seem to exhibit the same uh, resistance values as those, so Unfortunately, we're going to have to take a look at the onboard charger itself. So, let's uh, have at it. One very important step here is to always have this 
high voltage line disconnected before doing any high voltage work. And wear your class zero gloves. Okay, so why did I go through all the trouble of removing the splash shield here in the rear? Well, I need to get to these uh, water cooling cables that enter here and uh, go into the charger here. And unfortunately, you can't unhook it from the interior of the car, so you have to go under the car. But uh, yeah, now I will uh, drain the coolant. I managed to find a replacement, better used onboard charger, so let's check it out. Ta -da! Okay, so um, let's just throw this thing into the car and uh, see if it works. Time lapse! Okay, so I reconnected the battery and I also reinstalled the fuse and uh, before I like assemble the whole interior I just want to uh, hook it up and test it and know for sure that the new charger is working before I just put in the uh, massive amounts of interior that is rem needed to remove for this job. So yeah, I'll just connect this and we'll do a charge test. Okay, this is exciting, so I'm gonna plug in an EVSC and we will see how it performs. Mm, it's charging. Will it stop after five seconds? Yay! It won't stop! Hooray! Okay, now I can bleed the coolant system before we get too much air in it, so I'll just stop that. Nice! Okay, so some of you are probably going to ask, well, what about the old unit? How did it fail? And um, the answer to that will unfortunately remain a mystery because um, I'm not going to be tinkering with this one. The customer is going to get it as a return and they will bring it to an electronics expert that will take a closer look at it. Uh, there are some excellent forum posts that I can link to. People have been successfully repairing these, swapping out uh, capacitors, diodes, etc. But in case there's some like bigger fault, say the waffle plate has been damaged, uh, then unfortunately these aren't economical to repair. So yeah, the early leaf has a bit of a design flaw with these chargers, but oh well, it is what it is. So. We've now completed the first charge, discharge, charge cycle and uh, this vehicle can be returned to the customer. I hope you enjoyed this quick video on how to replace the onboard charger on the early leaf and uh, be sure to check out the links below if you have a similar issue. Maybe they can help you. Okay, roll out.